Hello and welcome along to WD18, the Watford fan channel for another video, for another podcast. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a different one today. We're kind of going to go with the flow uh, about Watford at the moment because it felt like it all kind of came to a head after our defeat at Huddersfield at Vicarage Road. Yesterday it finished Watford 1, Huddersfield Town 2. In the Championship, my name is Jacob Colshaw. I'm joined by Sam Yuko and Charlie Zazera, as always, to, to review, analyse, dissect and just kind of talk about how we're feeling about the football club at the minute. Sam, did it ruin your weekend yesterday? 100%, mate. I'm gutted, to be honest with you. Um, we'll go on to obviously a bit more about how we're all feeling, I think, at the moment later in the video. But there's something about playing Huddersfield with Watford where everything just seems to go wrong against them. I think back to... In the Marco Silva season, when we lost 4-1 to them at home, I think that was the game where pressure really started ramping up on Silva. A few years after that, I think Vladimir Ivic's last game in charge was away at Huddersfield. Uh, last season, obviously, we lost, uh, was it 3-2 at home? Batman got sent off, calls against the owner, and yesterday, it looks like it could be Valerian Ishmael's last game. So Huddersfield are officially a bogey team, I would say, for Watford. Um I'm just gutted, mate, to be honest with you. I think you can see by all of our faces today that, yes, it's it's tough, tough time. Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, I speak to Sam. Just deflated, mate. Like, we're going to talk about the rumours, what's happening. Um, but I wasn't at the game. I, I went to um, Man United Fulham with my dad and kind of saw the scores come in and knew it was bad. Oh, I was worried when I saw those subs those early subs and found out that they're for bad performance. I thought as a manager, if you don't win after making that bold decision, it's risky. So I was worried when that happened, obviously when the result came in, I think we should look at big picture stuff, but if the rooms are true. I'm pretty worried that the Twitter account hasn't tweeted in a while. So if the rumors are true that um, Sack's been, Val's been relieved of his uh, duties, yeah, really, really frustrating um, Groundhog Day again and just um, just really frustrating to be a Watford fan. Yeah, in terms of what's coming up on the show today, we're going to talk about that horror show uh, against Huddersfield yesterday. Then following the game, if you didn't see, uh, TalkSport revealed or they their sources had revealed that Valerie and Ishmael is on the brink of being sacked by Watford after after what happened yesterday. And later on in the show, on a bit more of a <clears throat> pardon me, on a bit more of a positive note, we're going to be touching on the WD18 Cup on the 23rd of March and revealing the teams and the draw uh, for that one as well. So make sure you stick around. Make sure to leave a like on the video, even if you enjoy us being a bit negative about Watford today. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to WD18, comment down below your thoughts. We'd love to hear what you think, and we'll get as many of your comments into the chat and into the discussion as possible i think actually the best place to start guys is is on the rumors um from talksport yesterday and we do have to caveat it with that there hasn't been another source uh, that has revealed that valor and ishmael is is close to losing his, his job or is on the brink uh, naturally with the form that we're in it's two points in the last 21 available in the league at home it's a pretty poor record um valor and ishmael is understandably going to come under a little bit of pressure and also, obviously the way potso operates as well that is gonna that is gonna unfortunately happen. Um, but Sam, you came out of the ground yesterday. You talked, to, you 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 felt the way you did about the performance, and then you see the rumor that Ishmael is on the is on the brink. Uh, what was your reaction? Was it was it surprised, or was it sort of same old same old? No, I, I thought as soon as the full time whistle went yesterday, I thought that was it for Valerian Ishmael. Um, I think the writing has been on the wall for a while. Over the last few weeks, I thought if we lost at Rotherham last week, I think that would have been it. And I think the nature of the performance at Rotherham wasn't great. Relied on a moment of brilliance from Yasser Espria, followed by that performance on the whole yesterday. I think it was pretty obvious what would happen. And yes, you can say it's harsh. Yes, you you, you could say that he should have he should have been been there, been gone earlier. But I think under this ownership, we know that if results aren't good enough then the manager will go. We know that Pozzo isn't going to change. Leopard's not going to change their spots. He told us, told fans in the summer that he's not going to change. So I think it was inevitable, to be honest with you. And I'm just deflated, Jacob, because I think you said this to us as well, that over the last few months and this season, Watford have built up something which, yes, it's not unbelievable, but it's better than what we've seen. And I feel like that's all been unravelled in the space of a month or so. 
Charlie, from your perspective, were you surprised by the links and the rumours? And we, we are talking as if it has been confirmed. Uh, it hasn't. It is very much just one source at the minute that's that's revealed it. As Charlie said, the sort of output on the social media channels has been pretty pretty quiet, apart from Talksport revealing that tweet and then Watford posting what uh, Ishmael's post match interview with the club. So. Look, we are very much basing it off of one source and one source only. But but Charlie, just for this to come out, even so, even if he does go on to stay, it really does feel like it, it's it's almost inevitable. Am I am I wrong to think that? I just think the ownership has created a, a culture within the club, within the fan base, that if you do go on a bad run, that there's inevitable chat about the manager. I don't think that's any fans' fault, and I would love kind of everyone to kind of back the manager and try and be as positive positive as possible but it's the cold reality that you, you know it's going to happen and I think I could list what Val's done this season we had 18 players leave in the summer um we only spent about three four million on players um I thought you can see he's tried to implement a decent brand of football um and I think He's, we've said on this so many times how much it's been better than last season. We're joking about that. And we've said that we've got a connection back. We've got a small squad, a young squad. And then you know, I'm looking at the table now and I'm thinking, just take a, take a breath. Like, we're not we're not going to get relegated. We're not going to go up. Val said, it's a season of transition. What is the aim for this season? We're not going to get playoffs. So making this decision now just makes zero sense for me. We're struggling financially. How much is it going to cost this decision? The club to relieve him of his duties and yeah just just i was i was actually joking in the pub before the game like fulham fans are taking the mix saying what for the manager and i was like oh you know he's the eighth longest manager in the championship now um but yeah the joke's on us again and frustrated i just think take a breath we, we won our last game i know it was only rotherham but we won our last game and why do, do we have to have such a big reaction after every defeat we're not going to go down just let it play out for the rest of the season. And look, if we assess at the end of the season and it's not working for everyone, at least you'll have a pre-season making, making a change now. And like this short termism, just, it's just never going to be sustainable. And it's, doing, it's driving me mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, no, I, I said, I'm very much on board with the, with the lads in terms of the consensus towards this one. I mean, I kind of put a tweet out yesterday sort of just summarising my feelings about it. I, I mean, if you look at the squad on paper, I, I think Watford are about where they deserve to be in terms of the league table in the Championship. As the guys mentioned, there's been some positive signs this season. But you look at the strength and depth and we're 11th in the league on 44 points with 12 games to go. I don't think really that tells a lie. You know, I don't think we should probably be any higher. If anything, we probably could be a little bit lower if it wasn't for some individuals this season bailing us out. And that's not to say that Val hasn't done a good job, but, you know, you look at the team on paper and there's a lot better teams in the Championship than us when you look at when you look above us. And sacking Val or changing the manager, as we've seen so many times across Watford, I think it's 11 different managers we've had since the start of 2020. A different manager really won't change that. Um, I mean, there is an argument, Sam, to talk about sort of what happened in the January transfer window. There's been a lot of people have said to me, like, look, you mentioned that he hasn't been back properly to push on and push on for the playoffs. Um, whether that was the objective or whether it wasn't, you know, there was an opportunity to push for the playoffs and, and that hasn't happened. You know, we're completely out of it. If anything, we're kind of looking over our shoulder a little bit um, towards the end of this season, which, look, it, last season, 49 points kept Birmingham, Birmingham up in the league. So Watford are five points off that at the minute. Watford aren't going to be going down this season. I'm, I'm pretty confident of that. But what do you make of the people who are suggesting that the board didn't back Val in, in January, yet he did say that he prefers a tight and smaller squad? I think, I don't think he was lying when he said he prefers a tight and smaller squad. I'll go back to it again. I bring it up a lot, but I think back to that interview where uh, with Dan Gosling, they gave with Andrew French saying that there were players who were leaving training after five minutes because they just weren't needed because there were too many players there. But if there's one thing I've learned in football and over the years now is that never believe what a manager says in a press conference because genuinely it's very rare in a situation like that that someone's going to come out and call the call out the owner because immediately from that point the pressure's on him there and I do think Valerian Ishmael was happy at Watford and I think that probably what was he he was telling the media was different to what he was saying 
behind closed doors as well. So look, it's it's all on upstairs, to be honest with you. I think Val did get a lot wrong as well. Um, the Ryan Andrews situation, again, we saw it yesterday. It's baffling, to be honest with you, why Ryan Andrews isn't playing um, and why he's persisting with Tom Deli Bashir at right back. But it, it's all on upstairs, isn't it? You can't, you can't, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I think the problem is they expect instant success and instant results. I actually also say that the board are deluded, to be honest with you, because I think they've ultimately sat them with the belief that we could still get playoffs this season and still get promoted. And they think that there's still an extra bit of bit in there that we could go on a run. And I think that's just purely delusional, to be honest. And I think that's probably why they've sacked him. It, there, there, he hasn't been confirmed yet. We no, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't yeah. confirmed just yet. <laughs> Um, there was there was some rumours flying around on Watford Twitter that there was an emergency meeting after the game yesterday. Uh, Charlie, to flip it round, is there an argument to suggest he should be sacked? Um, based on the results, based on, as Peter says, uh, was it Peter up here? Sorry, Steve. It's not the results, it's the tactics, no energy, no aggression. I mean, in terms of performances, that was probably the worst of the bunch for me this season and there's been some pretty there's been some bad ones there's been some good ones but there's been some bad ones I think a boxing day against Bristol City we weren't at the races it was very similar to that for me but is there an argument to say that there there that that Val should go based on what you've seen recently no I've seen enough evidence to show that um we are a half decent team with the players that we've got and I've seen I haven't can't reel them off but I reckon at least 10 good performances this season and some people might think that's not enough but the situation that he's come in, look, we know it's going to take time. Like you've seen, like you look at Jurgen Klopp and what he did today, bringing on the kids, and they're all built into that. Like that's the culture that has been kind of managed at that Liverpool club for what nine years now. Val's in like what six months, and he's trying to sort a culture out. If the decision came, that everything just goes back to square one. Um, Val's not perfect. Um, I think he's made some bad decisions. Um, but did you any of you guys see the Ben Hamer interview who said yeah. we were perfectly coached? Um, yeah, I, don't amazing. Know, I don't know if you've got quotes, but he he was back in bow and saying we've been perfectly coached this week. So I don't know if that suggests um, that suggests that the player, he has lost the dressing room. You're never going to keep all players happy. And I think for the majority, he's done well to keep the majority of the players happy. Ryan Andrews is a big question mark. Everyone wants to see him playing. He said about him wanting more composure on the ball from Tom Deli. Um, I think Val is a manager who's not very arm around the shoulder, likes to keep his distance, kind of disciplinarian Fergie. They said it about Ange, which was quite surprising. James Madison said it. And I think I think, um, I think, think Ishmael's is quite the same. Um, that type of manager, not too much arm around the shoulder and just kind of keeping his distance from the player, which is in the modern day, I think it's a lot harder because players need that kind of communication and they need to feel loved. And so that might go against him. But I think he's done a decent job with the hand he's hand he's been given. No, he hasn't been perfect, but I certainly do not think he deserves to be sacked. I think it's it'd be a, a, a really bad decision, in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. I think I wanted to take it back to this before we, we will touch on the game yesterday because, you know, it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't pretty. But I remember we after the Sheffield Wednesday game, we did <clears throat> a post-match pint. Um, we talked about sort of where this Watford team is going. And I think I said the line, if I remember correctly, that you can't really rebuild really under the same owner, um, under Gino Pozzo. I think you can only get so far in terms of, I think Ishmael has instilled discipline. I think he's brought that back. I think he's brought back authority for the manager. But unfortunately, you need that sort of alignment with the top in terms of if you're going to if you're going to completely refresh and rebuild the culture at this football club. And I think until Pozzo leaves and until he sells up, it will probably be very similar until until the day he leaves. Uh, Sam, I don't know if you're you're kind of on your thoughts on that, but I, I think you can only do so much of a rebuild under the same ownership who has a track record of getting rid of so many managers over the few years. Yeah, hundred um... percent. Pozzo has to go. Um, it's it's very easy. To say, it's very easy to say sell the football club, and I get the argument that that like I know there are a lot worse owners in football. You see what happens with Reading and everything. But if we know that there is definitely an upgrade out there, then then yeah, I just I'm just bored to be honest with you, Jacob. I think that's the bottom line. I've I'm losing interest. I'll still go every week because it's about the day out with friends and and it's a nice break at the end of the week. But to be honest with you, with what 
I was feeling that connection back with this Watford team and and it's gone completely again now. Um, not necessarily with individuals in that, but it's just it's just so frustrating because it just feels like whenever we take one step forward, we're taking three steps back at any given moment. Last season, appointing Rob Edwards was a step forward. We sack him when we go three steps back and see Luton get it promoted. This season, we have a good manager in there. We back him during a really difficult period, particularly after that Sunderland game, give him a new contract. And then, and then we decide not to going towards the end of the season when there's nothing to play for. It's just, baffles me to be honest with you Jacob and nothing nothing's going to change and what's the point in getting excited now because let's say I don't know we get interim until the end of the season and then we appoint someone new in the summer we say we're going to give them a project we'll see the same, same quotes over and over again from coming from upstairs um from the likes of Scott Duxbury and whatever and then and then bang next thing we know the manager sacked off for a bad run of form so <sighs> Just where where do we go from here? I just don't get it. I'm just fed up. I'm just we we rinse it's rinse and repeat every season two three times. This season it's only once, which to be fair is progress. The fact that we've got to February and we're only saying this now, but <laughs> it's hurting to be honest with you. <laughs> when you say that's progress, that's what, you know goodness me, what are we doing? Um, Charlie, let's talk about yesterday. We've talked a lot about Val, and let us know what you think in the comment section below. Um. There were some people who, who did, to be fair, say in, on, online that they think Val should go. But at the same time, I don't know what that would really achieve uh, between now and the end of the season. But there we go. Um, <clears throat> Charlie, Huddersfield defeat at home. Uh, let's go. Let's take it from the start. Andrew's not selected uh, again at right back. That's five games in a row that he's not started for Watford. And he's, uh, Val's position was Tom Deli Bashiru in that position, despite us only having one. Well, despite our best right back not playing in that position, uh, what did you make of that initially when the lineup came out? Yeah, just um, a strange one, really. Like um, I, I read some of some of sorry, the dog's going mad. I read some of um, Andrew French's quotes they did with Val asking about, and he was his main thing was saying it was a purely tactical decision, um, purely tactical decision. Tom keeps better con like composure in the build up, better control. But if you've watched, if you've watched the, every time Ryan Andrews played, like he, he's been outstanding, he's been phenomenal. Even the recent game where he put a through through ball into Dennis out of nothing, like he's just got that magic touch. And pff, is there something about don't want don't want to show too much of him so they don't have to sell him? I, I I doubt that. It sounds ridiculous. So look, all managers kind of have their reasons Val said he wants that more control but it's not ideal we did see Dennis play through the middle which is something that all fans have been yearning for um and I think apart from Andrews I think everyone would have been happy with that lineup um obviously I didn't watch the game but what did you guys think with especially with Dennis down the middle uh per personally I, I out of all the options we've got a striker Dennis is the best one in terms of the ability I don't think there's any doubt when you you sort of look at Rybic uh Bayo he, if, if you we talk about our best eleven, he plays down the middle and he, he makes up that best eleven. Uh, I felt actually I felt a little bit sorry for Dennis because I didn't think he played badly at all. I just felt the service to him was absolutely terrible in that first half. The second half, Esprit did a little bit of the magic down the right hand side once again, set him up, um, and it was a great finish as well. Great touch, great finish, and it was just so frustrating. As soon as he got that goal, within about a minute, he, he got injured and got taken off. And to be fair, I think Dennis was one of the few players yesterday that could come off with their heads held high. I thought Chat for Detsy. Could come off with his head held high. I thought Hamer could as well. Um, Espria, to be fair, because he, he pretty much created the goal on his own. Uh, apart from that, I was really struggling, Sam, for any players that can come away with any credit out of that. Um, was there? Have I missed anyone, or was was there anyone that I I probably over I don't, uh, a bit over positive with? I don't think so. I think that was probably particularly the first half was the worst collective performance I've seen since Luton away. Um, that first half at Luton away, I remember being particularly bad. Um, and yesterday, I think, was on a par, if not worse than that. It was absolutely terrible. Zero control at all. And I think we have to, by the way, credit Huddersfield, by the way. New manager came with a game plan. I thought they executed it really well and, and they're like a decent side. Um, so, yeah, they've got a good chance of staying up, probably. But, yeah, I don't think there's any place to be honest beyond the ones that you mentioned who could who could hold their head high, to be honest. Um did Dennis come with an injury? Yeah, groin. Um, 
I don't know if I'm slightly regretting my uh, Dennis excitement because he's clearly not fit, I don't think. And yeah, how severe this groin injury is. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I just, yeah, Sam, amazing. I wanted to ask you about the decision to take off Kone and Kembe at 25 minutes. Now, Charlie wasn't at the ground and we got a text from him, as he said at the top of the show, saying, what was this all about? Uh, and it's fair to say that first 25 minutes was an absolute shambles. I mean, we were all over the shop. There was no movement. There was no one taking responsibility on the ball. There was no sort of clear plan to our play at all. It was just slow sideways. And then we'd just launch it up top and see what happens. Uh, Sam, what was your reaction and your initial feeling when you saw the ball go up and you saw uh, Chat for Detsy and Tom Ince getting ready to come on? Tom Ince, frustration, but in credit to Tom Ince, actually. I mean, he should have scored a couple, but it was probably the first time in a long time they actually looked a bit up for it, to be fair. I thought he looked lively, Tom Ince. Uh, his final ball had to improve. And Georgie, there, like we said, I thought he did okay as well. It was just taking off Ishmael Kone. I was really, really surprised with. I think the problem would have been if you take off Jake Livermore instead, then sort of where does that leave the midfield? But, yeah, it was... I, I think something had to be done in that first 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And credit to Val, I think, for doing that, for being proactive. I think at times this season, he's been too reactive. Um, and I think he saw that while it was nil nil, we had an opportunity to change it. And, and he did try and do that, albeit to not much effect, because I don't think much changed, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it didn't surprise me, particularly the midfield was non-existent for that first bit yesterday. Um, Kiembe, I know he's just come back from injury, but he, he looked really off it yesterday as well um hopefully he can you know work his way back up to Matt sharpness but yeah it, it didn't surprise me to be honest with you did you agree with it i don't know what else he could have done that's the only thing like maybe take ken off ken was poor but it's the middle of the park that needed work so i think those were the only two subs that he could have made to be fair i had a little bit of a problem with it because I felt that you're basically scapegoating two of your most important players this season in Kone and Kiembe. I mean, Kone has been brilliant this season. I he had a shocker yesterday in that first 25 minutes. Kiembe, as you say, Sam, looked like someone who wasn't match fit. I just think to take them off at 25 minutes, two of your most important players, two of the players that you're going to have to rely on between now and the end of the season, I'm just not sure how well that sits with me personally. Wait till half time. And actually, the fact that, just as Charlie said, it didn't work out. Val kind of has a bit of bit of pine. No, yeah, of course. Um, of course I, I, was, I was talking though, like in answer to your question at the time, I thought fair enough to be honest with you. And then here it's seen the Kone reaction after I think it was Andrew French said that he didn't even leave the ground at the normal exit or something like that. He went round yeah, went through the media and, suite. Yeah, um, which was really really interesting. That um, yeah, well, I mean, what I'd say to that though, I don't have a problem with early subs. Um, I know it was incredibly different circumstances, but was it? Brighton away when we got promoted and there was an early sub made there tactically to change it. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, Ketchiani um, came off. Yeah, but um, um, I forgot Toja who came on. on. Toja, I'm not sure. I, I, don't know, I can't remember to be honest. And I don't know. Yeah, it was a yeah, that, very different, very different circumstances to be fair. Um, but I, I don't mind it to be fair. And I thought something had to be done. It just didn't pay off, which I think Val's got to answer questions for. Well, I think also Charlie, it wasn't the fact for me that it was it was a real tactical difference. It was more, it was just the intensity of the players coming on was probably a bit higher. But in terms of the quality of the player coming on, like if we're being honest, Chat for Detsy and Ints are a downgrade on Kiembe and, and Kone. But look, I understood, I understood what Val was trying to do. But I, I just, if, let's, if you flip it now, Charlie, and you look at the decision, it doesn't help Val, does it, in terms of keeping the, keeping the players on side? Yeah, the minute I saw that change, I thought, if you don't win the game after this, You've got you've you've given yourself a big problem. Um, just take a breath. You, we're not even losing. Um, I think to, to do it is quite humiliating for a player. I've heard quite a few players talk about. Um, you know, I saw it yesterday. Like Ten Hag brought Anthony on for a minute. Do you know what I mean? Like it's quite humiliating, and that's even worse. Getting hooked and look, Val would have seen the team. He would have prepped perfectly, like Ben Hamer said. And yeah, this one would be on the players in terms of that performance, but um, you've just got to try and think, just hold your nerve, wait till half time, see how the game goes. Cause it's not like we were two nil down or anything, but 
I just think that bigger repercussions after that. And look, it's a mistake from Val, in my opinion, but I, th- I do think he's made, he's done a lot of good work. And if this is kind of, if this results in his dismissal, I just think it's such a shame because he has done, in my opinion, a lot more good work than he has done bad work. Um, a bad one for him yesterday, bad day at the office. And um, it could be costly, which would be gutting, really. And as Alex says, that was probably our best starting eleven, bar Andrews and Martins, mm. Tom Deli, Bashir, and Semmer. We had the chances, if should have won regardless of the performance. Uh, Sam, that is that's a fair point. Despite us being really bad, I mean we were bad, and we didn't deserve to be one up. If I'm being completely honest, uh, I thought we came not against the run of play, but Huddersfield should have been ahead. So I thought, and is it Andone, the uh, the guy, Rodoni? Sorry, my bad. No, uh, Bournemouth manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Um, Rodoni, he was probably just running the game. To be honest, he was he was brilliant for them. Um, but but Sam, what was so disappointing about the performance, just in terms of the tactical element and what you saw yesterday? I think there were shades of last season. To to be honest with you, um, for so so many times this season, what I've been able to praise. And we go the bingo card, the intangibles, the fight, <laughs> <laughs> the fight, the effort, the endeavor, the heart. All of that was, has been there throughout this season. But yesterday, for the first time, was the first time I sat there and thought, nah, they are not at it at all. I don't think any of the players really stood up and thought, yeah, let's take control. Let's take the game by the scruff of the neck, um, particularly in that first 15, 20 minutes when it was clear the Huddersfield were more up for it than us. I just thought we really went into our shells. And that's what I was most disappointed about because that's the clear thing that Valerian Ishmael has worked on this season and in, in changing is the attitude and 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 everything about performances and the way we approach games. And just none of that was there yesterday. And like I say, it felt like watching. You could put that game towards the end of last season under Chris Wilder and it wouldn't look out of place. Mm. No, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, I, I'm, I'm really struggling. I, I, we've done so many videos on this channel. Like, I, I can't think of, there's been many, many streams. But this is actually, I'll be completely honest, this is one of the few that I'm just sat here going, like, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost lost for words. Like, I, genuinely. And I, maybe it's just because I was I was absolutely fuming after the game. And then I saw the tweet come out about Ishmael and I was like, just <laughs> not give up. But I was just sat there going, like, what, what is going on? What is going on with Watford? Um Charlie, can you see it improving this this season? Because I, I mean, it, and when, when I, what, what I mean by that is, in terms of the league position and eleventh, and in terms of the points, I think that's where we deserve to be. And I'm not too disappointed with that, really. I think when you take a step back, you're like, okay, it's a pretty decent season with the squad that we have and the amount of young players that have had game time and working on limited resources. But I just don't. What, where did Watford go from here? If it's and we, we've got this sort of jeopardy in the background with Val. The team looks devoid of any confidence. Our home form in the league is at an all-time low this season. We're probably picking up a bit more away from home, but where would you go from here? Where do you see it going from here? It's tough because we're so like involved. We talk about Watford every day of our lives. So like short term, if a new manager comes in, there'll be a tiny bit of excitement about what could be, what they could bring. Um, you might win a few other games, but in the back of your head, like you know what's going to happen in the long run. Um, we haven't, we're not well resourced. We're not going to be able to bring in loads of new players in the summer. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you, Jacob, in terms of don't know what to say. We've said it. We said we kind of wanted to have a raw chat, and I think hopefully we can come away from this chat and feel a bit lighter because, like, last 24 hours, I've just felt frustrated. But, <laughs> I just don't think it's fair on the supporters. I honestly don't. And we've got people like ours. There's loads of other amazing fan channels. Um, people who did the, yellow, the the golden pages. Do you know what I mean? We've got such a great fan base, so committed. People go to away days like every single game. People who watch around the world and wake up at four in the morning. And we're the ones who have to go through this just turgid, like boring cycle that it seems never ending and um it's hard because all we want at the day is like just a team that we can get behind and meet up with our mates and enjoy supporting our club and I think on the whole this season I think we've been pretty positive um and like now I just feel like the rest of the season I'm looking into like a dark hole because it's just like ugh. like the one thing with Val which I saw and he had and he had faults 
but I saw I saw a destination. I saw yeah. where he wanted to go. I saw the style he played. He wanted to play, um, and I could see the culture he was trying to trying to get. And I was on board with absolutely everything. And I looked at the players with I don't want a name drop, but were like Ray, Rajevic and do you know I mean the right back situation and um, our other centre half. And I think if, if you just take your time and kind of recruit. And we've played under it. We talked about the fitness levels, how impressive the fitness levels have been. Sam's done tweets, I'm sure, about how many late goals we've scored. Um, the stat came out as well about we've had to the most shots, goals from outside of the box out of England's top four tiers. That is definitely part of Valerian Ishmael's principles. So all of that now just thrown away and we've got to go again. So I'm totally with you. I'm just devoid of any... Energy. What's that clock mean now? I'm running out of energy, Jacob. Um, <laughs> it's hard because I, I love you guys and Watford and the team. You're never going to not support them. But days like today are just like an absolute killer. It's an absolute killer. Like, I don't know. How do we, Sam, how do we approach going into the rest of the season? It's a great question because it's not... It's always for me, like at least in the last few years since COVID, where things haven't been great. It's always been more. <laughs> God's sake. For people who are listening, when is it going to end, Robbie? Is what Rio Wolves put in the the chat. Um, yeah, look for me since COVID, it's been more about the it's been more about the day out than the football. Like I said, it's a day out with friends. It's a day out with escaping from everything, the difficult things going on in the world, and I think. That, that won't change, to be honest with you. And I think it just purely becomes that, to be honest with you. I'm going to Millwall at the weekend with a few friends and just, just for the day out, to be honest with you. If we win, happy days. If we lose, meh, probably manager will get sacked. Probably, I don't know, uh, but go go back to Vicarage Road in a couple of weeks' time, probably lose. It's just going through the motions, to be honest with you, like we have over the last three years and just fed up, to be honest with you, and how I approach it for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's just, it's more about what happens off the pitch now for me than on it. Should we read through some comments? I think it's the best place to go with this before we kind of wrap up with the WD18. I'm sorry, I'm normally... Yeah. Pretty, I'm, no, I'm the same, it's like clutching, clutching. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm right to think I'm a pretty positive guy, but I'm really struggling today. Um, okay, let's, let's go through some comments and let's, you know, let's see where we go. So I'm going to go right to the top. Here we go. Okay. Um, there was one, <laughs> another funny comment. Another one for Sam's bingo card is saying, X player had his best slash worst game in a Watford shirt. <laughs> uh, Rio, Rio Wolf, question for you, Charlie. Um, bit of a hospital pass, but can we get sucked into a relegation battle? Nine points off, hard running. I can only see one win, possibly. No, no, I don't think we can. Like, I'm looking at the teams down there and there's quite a lot that are getting dragged in there now. We've, um, Stoke have dropped in there, haven't they? They're on a terrible, terrible run. We've seen Rotherham um, last week. I, I dubbed them as probably one of the worst teams I've ever seen. Um, we played them and we weren't much better, but managed to get the win. Um, we said we praised Huddersfield, a bit of a manager bounce. QPR have improved a bit. Millwall kind of down there, Swansea. No, I can't see us get sucked into a relegation battle at all. Um, I don't know how many points we're off the playoff, but um, I think we're exactly where we need to be. I had a look on like our, the money we spent this season compared to other championship teams. We're 15th. Uh, we spend the 15th most and we're 11th. So some could call that overachieving. I look at I look at all the players leaving as well. Jao Pedro is my Lassar, Like We've lost our best players in the summer. Even players like leaders like Tom Cleverley, Craig Cathcart, uh, leaving in the summer it was such a big job for Val like and um, I thought he'd done a pretty decent job so no I don't feel we're getting a relegation battle look football is fast changing and we're all fickle and we might bring this next man in and we might beat Millwall 3-0 away and we'll be Sam will be buzzing on the in London like having a few beers <laughs> but I just think for me it's just that that long that long term thing under this ownership which is um just stumping me, stumping my enthusiasm. But no, I don't think we're going to be in a relegation battle. Do you have you two think? Yeah, well, Peter says lose to Swansea in Millwall and we're right in it, Sam. I think we might be looking over our shoulders, but I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think we'll be in a relegation battle. We were one point off the playoffs the other day. Like, <laughs> It's oh, no. mental how football changes. Isn't it? Now, now, how many points are we off the, off the playoffs? We're now uh, 12 points off the playoffs. 
No, 11 points off the playoffs. Um, do, you reckon this, do you reckon this appointment then? Obviously, it's related to results recently. But do you think in, they're appointing now to keep us in the league or hopefully get a run together for promotion? Well, this is what I don't get because when Chris Wilder came in, it was like, OK, we've got an outside chance of the playoffs. Let's see if we can get a run. Let's get the confidence back in some of the players. Look, he even said it himself. He, there was only so much he can do with the with the players he had and with the sort of setup he had at the time. I'm actually genuinely not sure, unless you're planning for next season, why on earth you change the manager now? There is, I just don't see the point in it at all. I know people are saying it's it's been bad recently. I get it. Uh, we Our home form has been poor. The away form is probably, you know, and individuals are carrying us at the minute when the confidence is shot. I, it might be a case of Val's lost the dressing room. You know, it might be a case of that. But I'm not quite sure what bringing a manager until the end of the season would do. And then even then, if you're planning for next season, there's no guarantees the the, the owners will be here next season. You know, I'm not saying they're going to move on, but you, you never know. That it's, there's a lot of uncertainty at Watford at the minute. So... I'm not really sure what that would achieve unless it was, as you say, Sam, just to make sure we don't get relegated and enjoy that last part of the season. A lot of people around me at the games are saying they'd just like to see the youngsters play until the end of the season and and give them a run out. Um, but, I mean, one man we do need to talk about, and Lou Warren says it in the comment section, have a long chat about Rybic's header. Generally the first time I've laughed at a shot. And there was also a comment from Robin. Good to see you, mate. As a grown man, I don't know how Rivic handled 20,000 people laughing at him during that cameo. Bloke just isn't good enough technically. Uh, really up there with what the worst 30 minutes I've seen a player have. Um, I, I do feel for Rivic, And to be honest, if I'm a footballer, I'd much rather be booed than laughed at, Sam. Yeah, I've, I really, really feel for him. Um, because I feel like, unlike other Watford strikes I've seen over the years, like, I feel like he does try and the effort is there to get in the right positions. I just think he's so out of his depth at this level, to be honest with you. Um, and he's he's going to keep getting in the right positions, but he just can't finish. And, yeah, it's, it was difficult watch yesterday. Difficult to see how the stadium reacted to him because it was not like... At the time, we were 1-0 up, I think, and it wasn't like there was any ferocity towards it. It was just like, oh, here we go again, Rivic, that sort of thing. And... I mean, I had a few people coming at me for over the last few weeks of calling him the half Chir Harland after he scored on uh, scored a brace on his debut. Um, and I remember back to that debut, actually, and we said here on the channel that I was still slightly concerned about the way he was off the ball. I didn't think he was aggressive enough. And I think what's become clear is that I think that's affected his whole game now. And I, I just I, I, I do feel sorry for him, but he is just out of his depth. <laughs> there is one comment I've got to bring up, just total sidetrack. Nick Weinman is... <laughs> <laughs> this man is an absolute legend. <laughs> Went for a night out in London, ended up in a kebab shop in Bethnal Green. And uh, Nick came up to me. Um, and as you say by the comment, I saw you outside the kebab shop in London, Jacob, when I thought I found the best lookalike ever. <laughs> it was actually you. I've actually got a video of it, but obviously Nick, but I don't want me to show it. Uh, but basically he got one of our streams up and was like, mate, you really look like this guy I watched on this podcast. And I was kind of playing him along a little bit and just said, look, I don't know who you're talking about. And then <laughs> he's like, <laughs> that's you. So shout out to Nick. What a man. Um, Rivic, uh, Charlie, I mean, uh, do we? Do you want to touch on Rivic? Should I move on to another comment? No, okay. Uh, okay, we'll move on. Um, Jack, <laughs> if we sack Val, it will just be a vicious cycle of mismanage, uh, mismatch managers that can't get an improvement from a squad and end up finishing the table with discontent from the fans yet again. Um a question, Charlie. As someone who worked, I, I, honestly, if, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Honestly, I'm, I'm that close. Um, if you Val gets sacked, give me a manager that you'd want to come in. No, I don't want to. I don't want to yet. Like we Did don't you? know. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Cleverly. Oh, I'm sorry, but like I haven't even, I haven't got the energy to think of that. Like I think it'd be a bit disrespectful. Like it's not been confirmed yet. Um, I'm going to need at least, <laughs> I'm going to need like at least 24 hours, Jacob. I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't, I'm not in the right headspace. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sam. Sam, it, do you reckon give it Charlie to the end of the season? Charlie Daniels or Charlie Cesaro? Oh. That's the question. Um, <laughs> I mean, either. What about the <laughs> Charlie brothers? Um, I think two people I really want to keep hold of, regardless of the decision with Val, is Dean Whitehead and Omar Reza. I think they're two people who understand the DNA of the football club and I think they, they get it with supporters and um, 
I know it's not just about that with football, but I think it goes a long way in terms of understanding the DNA and what the fans want as well. So, yeah, it wouldn't shock me if one of those two got it until the end of the season, or Tom Cleverley or Char Charlie Daniels, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, whoever comes in will, will ultimately fail under this ownership. The next manager will fail under this ownership and it will, the cycle will go on. We'll be sat here again in three months' time and I'm fed up. Sorry, yeah. Last comment before we get on to the WD18 Cup, because I don't want us to... How's the WD18 Cup? Come on. <laughs> I don't want us to spoil your evening with all our sort of, not negativity, but we're, we're pretty down in the dumps at the minute. Simon, lovely comment. Keep positive, guys. We need to build, possibly not with Val, but there's no magic spell here. We're still recovering from relegation a few times, which is also a good point to, to mention. Okay, let's move on. W the 18 cut to wrap up the show today. Charlie. All of, all of our special guests are going to be um, claimed by the, hired by the Potsos till the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, just, you know, give us the season. Right. Ben Aiton, bring on the W the 18 cut. Really look forward to it. So we're going to do the draw uh, for the W the 18 cut. There's 10 teams. Uh, Charlie, the teams are, if we have the list. I, can, I mean, I, oh, there we go. All right. Teams so, are from so just, the, sorry. Go for it. No, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Ten teams are from the rookery end. The Mad Squirrel, the Watford FC staff, um, could be minus one soon. The uh, Man On from the Watford Trust guys. Uh, the Ground Staff, Dini in a Bottle, Lad Speak Out FC, the Northwest Hornets, Soul Survivor Church, and a great name. Real Madry. Real Madry. Love it. Uh, Mike B has made a great point. No velvet bag, Charlie. <laughs> Budget didn't stretch that far. <laughs> That's released it in a Rod Stewart and give it one of them. <laughs> um, so this is how it's going to work. Charlie's going to read the teams out, but as you can see on the screen, if you're listening to, to it on audio, we've got group one and group two. Um, so effectively, there's five teams in each, 10 teams in total, and that will be the group for the tournament, which is on the 23rd of March at West Hart Sports Club with some special guests coming. One confirmed already in Tom Cleverley, the current under-18s coach and potentially the next first-team coach. Uh, Sam, Charlie, do the honours, lads. Let's get going. <laughs> Team number one, Dini in a bottle. Oh, Charlie, I, need, uh, I think I need edit access, lads. Oh, absolute shocker. I think we should read we should redo oh, that. No, no. Oh, have I got it? Have I got it? No, no I don't. Quickly, yeah. do the access. Send for the access. Uh, Makes yeah. the World Cup draw look simple. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Team one, Dini in a bottle. Jacob, do you want to say about um what prizes we've got for the for the auction? Yes. Not all confirmed though, right? Still got still got still got a few. Um Someone, well, the first of which was actually yesterday after the game. Uh, and James Morris has kindly donated one of his match shirts signed for the WD18 raffle. We've also had Dan Backman donate a pair of gloves, a captain's armbands, and a pair of boots, if I'm not mistaken. Shirt. Shirt, captain's armband, gloves. Um, there was quite a few already, Charlie. You're going to have to help me here. I've kind of got We've a bit. We've also fun. got two signed shirts, one from the men's first team. One's from the women's first team. And I think I'm right in saying, Sam, we've also got um, two tickets to the first game of the season in hospitality next, next year. Yep, next season. And right. we're still, we're still there could be some more on the way as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And also, if you, as we said, if you're not uh, if you're not playing in the tournament, get down on the day. You can still be involved in the raffle, get involved with all the activities on the day. There's, there'll be plenty going on. Um, so Dean in a bottle was the first team in group one. Charlie, next He's team. Only view early, Sam. You in? He's on mute. Absolute shambles. All right, Sam. Just make a note of it. Team one was Dini in the bottle. Team two, the North West Hornets. A team close. To, I feel like we should have a line after each one. A team that's close to Charlie. Charlie's heart. Uh, any players to look out for, Charlie? <laughs> um, there's, there's. Uh, <laughs> There's one to look out for. You may recognise his voice uh, in the rookery who's playing for Northwest Hornets. So, um, yeah. Oh, I know the one. Yeah, you know that. Team three. Man on. 
Man the on. Watford Trust team. Love it. Great name as well. Yeah, just just on the on Man On, fantastic organisation, uh, helping a lot of people in the Watford area who perhaps struggle mentally um, and just need a, a kick around for an hour a week. Great. Team so. number four. And our sponsors. Mad Squirrel. There we go. We have to say we we uh, we're expecting this to be a pretty pretty good standard, by the way, guys. I have to say. So if you want to get involved on the day, twenty third of March, West Hart Sports Club team to make up the group A, Charlie. Team number five. Lads, speak out. FC. Great name. Great great name. And this is a team, by the way, that play uh, every week in a in a league in and around Watford. Um, to improve men's mental health, which is absolutely fantastic. So that makes up Group A for the WD18 Cup. Moving on to Group B, the final five teams. <laughs> Team six, the ground staff. Wow, Watford FC ground staff. They used to play on a carpet, but are they used to playing at West Hart Sports Club on the AstroTurf? That's the question. But we've had big things. We've had a lot of chat around their ability. Four names left. Four teams left. Charlie's is error. From, From the rookie end, the one and only, the original Watford podcast, John, Mike, DCW, Jason. The lads are going to be down there on the day. So make sure you, you do say hello to those guys. Real Madry. Wow. <laughs> that might be. Are we saying that's pick of the lot in terms of the name? That's a great name. Yeah, that's, great name that. that's one I might have to save up for fancy football next year. Just two left, yeah? That's all that's in the bowl. Two left. Hopefully, there's two bits of team hope. number nine, Soul Survivor Church. And this team, Charlie, is the team that I hope we're going to do a, maybe sing us some gospel. That'd be nice. great. Um, final team to wrap it up, team number 10. The Watford staff. Oh, bit of a Watford derby here. The Watford ground staff against. <laughs> Tell you what, are we calling that the WD18 derby? Uh, a, a man formerly of this parish, Elliot Murray, is a captain in that team. If you're a, if you're an OG of WD18, you would remember Elliot Murray with myself and Sam in uh, lockdown doing. I mean, and Sam, well, it's fair to say there were some atrocious trims on show at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, the, those those were the highlights of lockdown, though they were they were amazing and, and great to see Elliot's gone on to to do some great things as well with the club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and yeah, uh, so yeah well. now a buzzing friend talking about uh, WD18 um, heritage here and originals on WD18. We've got Robin HD coming down as well on the, on the decks during the day, which should be great as well. Absolutely, we've got we... <laughs> the gold celebration, Charlie. There we go. We've got we've got a. Uh... We've got a few bit more details to, to come out over the coming weeks. In terms of the, the plan for the day, that will be all revealed. Uh, Charlie's going to be manning the event. Me and Sam are going to be helping him as our assist, his assistant and then mixing up a bit of refing as well in between it. So if there's any dodgy decisions, look, all I'm going to say is I'm going to let the game go. I'm going to let it flow. I want to see a lot of attacking football, a lot of goals. Um, but as always, guys, if you could get down... Uh, on the day at West Hearts. We've got some really, really good guests coming along. We've got loads of people getting involved on the day. Um, 12 till 6 uh, at West Hearts, and then potentially a, a few few points afterwards at the Mad Squirrel. Uh, maybe yeah, a couple of and then, and then So we're thinking West Hearts, uh, Mad Squirrel, and then you see where the night goes, whether it's a prism job, potentially Pop Worlds, even maybe. I'm trying to think of other bars in Watford Walkabout. I mean... I've heard about this spinning dance floor. I want to see Cole Shaw on it. <laughs> but you can as well, if you can't make it, um, like we've had some great donations already. So thank you for everyone who has donated. We'll put a link in this description. But if you can't make it and you, you want to support, feel free to drop a donation in that link. Um, we're still looking for you. Anyone's got any raffle prizes or auction prizes that they want to donate that can help us fundraise. That'd be amazing. Um, we're looking for people to help out of any food on the day, anyone who's a keen baker um, or a tuck shop or sandwiches or anything like that. Anything you want to get involved or if you're not sure, but you want to get involved, just drop us a DM um, and I'm sure we'll find a way to help. And if there is individual players who want to play, um, drop us a message and we'll try to find a space uh, in one of the teams because I think some of the teams might need some more legs. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Four weeks to go. 
Four weeks to go. Not long. So make sure you do get involved. And if you want to drop us a DM at WDA Team Fans on Twitter, Instagram, etc. A few comments just to wrap up today. Thanks so much to everyone who stuck around. Uh, Alex King, Sam, do they still do hospitality in League One? <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope so, King. That would be all right. Uh, Ian says, we may not feel great tonight, but please don't forget to leave a like and a thumbs up. Top man, Ian. Really appreciate that. Uh, Charlotte says, a top, top draw, draw. And don't forget to donate on Charlie's Just Giving page, as as he just mentioned. And lastly, great comment from Freddie. How can we forget WD18s and Elliot's lockdown interviews with the players? Some great times, some great memories. Hopefully, more great memories to come with Watford. I know it doesn't feel like it at the minute, but trust the process. Maybe not, but let's see what happens with what football club under under Gino Pozzo and what happens to Val in the in the coming days and the coming weeks. Thanks so much to Sam Yuko, Charlie Zazera for joining me on today's stream. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy a little bit more of a downbeat stream. Uh, subscribe to WD18, turn your post notifications, comment down below your thoughts, get involved with the WD18 Cup, and we will see you next time. Take care, guys. Have a great week and up the audits. You want some?